Okay, g'day all and welcome to another video. So today we're going to be doing a bit of God Bolt compiler exploring. Good stuff. All right, so if you're not familiar with uh, Matt Godbolt's website just here, I think it's something really, really amazing. Something you should check out. So what it allows you to do is uh, you get two windows just here. You paste C++ or C code uh, into the left-hand window, and then you can select a compiler over here, and uh, it's going to spit out the assembly generated by that compiler. So it's just for exploring and experimenting with modern optimizing compilers and just seeing what they come up with. It's fascinating stuff. Uh, for today, what I thought we'd do is just explore four algorithms and four different compilers. Let's have a bit of Compiler Explorer, shall we? So the first compiler is Clang, and the first code that we're going to look at is the sum of integers from 1 to n. A little bit about the options that I'm turning on. I'm turning on 03, so aggressive optimizations here. Uh, AVX instruction set to see if these compilers can actually unroll some of these loops by themselves. And we're also turning on unsafe fast maths optimizations. It's not actually unsafe. Uh, it just means that the order of floating point instructions is not necessarily kept uh, accurate. Um, we're not going to be providing any vectorization hints to the uh, loops, but hopefully some of the compilers can unroll loops themselves. Anyway, here we have our very first uh, algorithm, the sum of integers from 1 to n. All right, test EDI, EDI. So this uh, looks like it's compiling for Linux. Yeah, so EDI will be the first parameter, or this n just here, our little integer. And then it says jump if it's less or equal to LBB01, which is going to be down here. So if, if, if it's zero to start with, then we just want to X or EAX, EAX and return. LEA, EAX, RDI minus one. Your guess is as good as mine. LEA, ECX, RDI minus two. Fair enough. Uh, IMUL. I think it's figured it out. Yeah, it's figured it out. So there's just an IMUL here. So the... Uh, Clang compiler has figured out that that is just a, uh, a multiplication just there. Nice one, Clang. All right, let's move on to the next compiler. Well done, Clang. Okay, the next compiler is GCC. Uh, okay, so GCC seems thoroughly confused. <laughs> um, it doesn't see this is um, the GNU compiler version 9.2. It doesn't seem to have realized that there's a trick to this at all. It goes test EDI EDI. So it checks if it's zero. And if it is, then it jumps down to L7, which is probably just going to return and then get out of there. Otherwise, it's got all of these bizarre things happening. So these will be the loops uh, to add the different numbers. It looks like it's unrolled it or something. V0 upper. I mean, it's... Uh, it's unrolled it and used uh, an AVX loop where possible. So that's these YMM registers just here. Absolutely amazing. So uh, GCC is using um, vector addition. Yeah, it's going to be slow. <laughs> okay, the next compiler is the Intel compiler version 19.0.1. Let's see what it comes up with. I think again, just like GCC, it doesn't seem to have noticed that there is a trick to this. Intel, come on. Uh, what it's decided to do is, uh, just like the GCC compiler, it's decided to uh, unroll and vectorize this loop just here. Okay, so once again, it's using AVX2. That's what I've specified up the top here, AVX2 as my vector uh, extension. So it's quite good that it's unrolled the loop, um, but, you know, it's going to be slow, really. If we pass like 440,000 in here or something, I mean, it's going to take a long time. Interesting data down here. Uh, it seems to have defined a bunch of uh, longs. Uh, eight, eight, eight. One, two, three, four. Maybe those are for masking. Who knows? Oh, the other thing I want to say about the Compiler Explorer, which is quite cool, if you hover over your C++ code just here, it'll highlight the region that it thinks um, it belongs to in the assembly code. So that's quite cool. So the body of the loop is highlighted in blue just there. It's all of these AVX instructions. Yeah, I would agree. That's definitely the body of the loop. Well done ya. Okay, ICC or the Intel compiler has unrolled AVX, but it hasn't realized that there is a trick that Gauss taught us all. Okay, and the final compiler here is the Microsoft compiler. Wow, would you look at that? So the Microsoft compiler, by the looks of it, hasn't... Uh 
hasn't realized that there's a trick, nor has it realized that it could use vectorization. So it hasn't auto vectorized this. We have nary an AVX instruction uh, apparent. What have we got here? Let's see, XOR, R10D, R10D, zero, a bit of R10, then copy that zero to EDX, R8D, and then load one into EAX. It's interesting. Uh, compare ECX to two, why? Uh, jump if it's less to LC10. Where's that gonna be, down here? Okay, so it, it's some, some some sort of a condition just here. If uh, if ECX is less than two, so I guess if it's one or negative, oh, that must be the problem. It must be that if if this so this is if this is unsigned, no, it doesn't seem to have made much of a difference. CMOV, what? <laughs> Why is it using conditional moves? <laughs> But never mind, never mind at all. So I guess because that's a signed integer, there, integer just there, maybe there is a little bit more to it. But um, Clang realized it fairly quickly. So, okay. So the next uh, operation, we'll start with the Microsoft compiler and we'll get back up through the other three. Let's have a look. This is a population count. And this is Brian Kernigan's code. It's a very clever, clever code just here. Let's see which of these uh, compilers can figure out this is actually a single assembly instruction. Pop count. Uh, let's see who can figure it out. So the Microsoft compiler, uh, no, by the looks of it, it has not figured it out. <laughs> the idea of a population count is just you get an integer and you count how many bits in that integer are set to one in binary. Yeah, so if it was the number, say, uh, five in binary, that's one, zero, one. So that would be uh, a population count of two. Uh, whereas if it's the number, say, uh, 15, then that would have a population count of four, since uh, 15 in binary is one, 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 one. Yeah, etc. So it just counts the one bits. Let's see what the Microsoft compiler has done with this one bit counting business, shall we? XOR, EAX, EAX. Let's zero EAX. And let's just check out what ECX is with a test instruction. Jump if it's equal to uh, here. Okay, so all they're saying just there is if it's zero, if the uh, integer that we're passed is zero, then we just return zero. It's fair enough, really stands to reason. Otherwise, L-E-A-E-D-X, R-C-X minus one, which would be that right there. Yeah, so that's pretty good. They've used L-E-A as, a, as an arithmetic instruction. Uh, nice one, Microsoft compiler, 19.22. Then Inc E-A-X, which is gonna be this bit just here, count plus plus, uh, and E-C-X, E-D-X, and jump if it's not equal. Yeah, so that must be that and just there, anding the left and right hand sides there, those little X's. And jump if it's not equal. So jump if we've still got more to do uh, back up here. So it looks like the Microsoft compiler has pretty much given us a an instruction for instruction literal uh, version of the C++ code. Okay, next up we have uh, the Intel compiler. Let's see what it's done. Okay, so we've got this uh, X or we've got this test for zero at the very start again, X or EAX, EAX. Just get that ready to return. If that happens to be zero, then we test EDI instead of ECX, since this is uh, compiled for Linux by the looks of it. Uh, jump if that's equal or jump if it's zero uh, down to here and return. Otherwise, the body of the loop is here. Uh, Inc EAX, okay, so that's your count plus plus. BLSR, BLSR, so that's gonna be a BMI instruction. Let's have a bit of a squiz, BL. Bit manipulation instruction set. There you go. Okay, so that's quite cool. So it looks like the Intel compiler has figured out that it can do the, um, that it can count the last bit by the looks with this BLSR instruction in one go and then jump if that's not equal or if we've still got more to do back up here to B1. Uh, I wonder what happens if we just go AVX1 and we get rid of that BMI instruction. Yeah, so that's really similar there to what the Microsoft compiler actually output. Nice one. Nice one, Intel. Let's go to another compiler, shall we? Ah, there we go. There we go. So GCC wins. Yeah, GCC, have a look at that. And he goes, you know what, mate? That looks like a pop count to me. Yeah, okay. So XOR EAX EAX. What on earth? Why would you do that? XOR EAX EAX. That's interesting, really. I wonder why they've XOR. It might be some kind of a false dependence or something. 
So the, the, whole, the whole loop just becomes pop count, P-O-P-C-N-T. That's an instruction that counts the one bits in an operand and sets it to this first operand here. So well done, you GCC. You figured it out. You did put a strange instruction at the top, but we'll let you, uh, we'll let you get away with that. Okay, so Clang, uh, yeah, Clang worked it out as well. He says, you know what, that's pop count. See ya. <laughs> Just ret, pop count, ret. Yeah, so Clang actually has neglected that top uh, EAX, EAX. I wonder why uh, GCC put that uh, XOR at the top there, zeroed EAX. I don't know. It looks like some kind of a false dependency trick. Yeah, but we'd have to really read into the very depths of the um, annals. <laughs> Okay, so our next algorithm will start with clang, and this is a sum of a floating point array. Now, what I want to see just here is um, how aggressively these things can unroll loops. Bear in mind that we've provided pretty much no hint here whatsoever that this loop can be unrolled, so it's all up to the compiler. Let's see what they do. Uh, test ESI ESI. Alrighty, if there's zero things in the loop, then let's just jump to uh, presumably some label that returns. Uh, otherwise, we want to compare ESI to 31, so it's performing some kind of a count just here, making sure that it's got enough uh, in the array, this ARR up here. Uh, 32 elements. All right, so if there's 32 elements or more, then presumably it's going to jump to a fairly aggressively unrolled loop. Uh, 32 elements, that's, that's a pretty astonishing amount of unrolling right there. Yeah, so that's really the loop that we're interested in. Let's have a bit of a look. So jump if it's above to LBB04, which is right here. Let's see where the actual unrolled loop is. Wow. <laughs> wow. Would you look at that? <laughs> that's, that's unrolled. Now you're talking. What have we got here? We've got uh, four registers and unrolled four times as well. That's amazing. Well done, Clang. All right, that's some pretty serious unrolling there. So what Clang's done is it said, okay, this is a pretty basic loop right here. It's used a VAD PS or add packed singles. It's used AVX registers to add, what's it going to be like uh, eight of them at once? Yeah, I think so. Eight of them at once. Wish I had my calculator. Yeah, and it's unrolled it using four registers or four accumulators. And then it's also unrolled that a further four times. Absolutely amazing. Okay, and the rest of this stuff will just be residual things. So that's going to be fast code. That's going to be really, really fast. Well done, yeah, Clang. Well done. All right, let's, let's have a look at the next compiler. So the next compiler is GCC. Let's see what happens. Uh, okay, so test ESI, ESI. Let's have a bit of a look here. Um, all right, so little things at the top there to say if there's, if there's nothing in the array, let's just get out of here. Otherwise, comp EAX and six. Why? Who knows? <laughs> uh, mov EDX. I don't know why it's zero XMM one. That's going to be an accumulator, I guess. Shift right EDX three. So that's going to be divide EDX by uh, eight. Shift arithmetic left RDX five, which will be multiply. multiply rdx by 32 so it's interesting that it divides it by eight just there and then uh, multiplies it by 32 it must be uh, it must be figuring out some alignment pointer or something like that maybe it's to use um the aligned uh, loads and stores anyway let's just move on let's see how aggressively it unrolls the loop i don't even know where's the uh, where's the actual body of the loop oh it's there it hasn't unrolled it anywhere near uh, as aggressively as Clang. It's still using the um, AVX2 instructions, so your YMM registers just here. So it's unrolled at least like eight times, which is quite cool. But um, yeah, nowhere near as aggressively as Clang. Interesting stuff. I would say the Clang code was probably overkill. I don't think you'd gain any more uh, speed after you've unrolled this maybe, say, four times? with uh, AVX. It's just a guess, but um, yeah, the returns on unrolling loops uh, dramatically decrease the more you unroll it. Yeah, but this is interesting that it, it doesn't actually look uh, very much like um, GCC has unrolled it at all uh, further than using AVX. 
Next compiler. Now we have the Intel compiler. What have we got? Well, we zero XMMO. Then we have a bit of a squiz at the number in the array. If it's zero, then we just get out of here. Fair enough, really. Probability of 50%. I don't think so. <laughs> Um, let's see, where does it actually perform the unrolling? Okay, just here. Whoa. Yeah, so it looks like the Intel compiler has used AVX registers, your YMM and your VADPS, add pack singles, uh, to add eight at once, and it's unrolled it uh, once more on top of that for a total of, uh, I guess, 16 uh, elements added per iteration. Oh, there it is right there. Add RCX16. So I think, uh, it's just a guess, really. You wouldn't know this stuff without actually trying it in the compiler, but uh, I think that's pretty much going to max out the speed. Yeah, I don't think you get that much more from unrolling that another two or three times. Good stuff, Intel. Let's have a look what the Microsoft compiler reckons. Okay, here we go. Here we go. So what has the Microsoft compiler got? Uh, MOV, UPS, ADPS. Okay, so it's there seems to be uh, no AVX instructions, which is interesting. So the Microsoft compiler, by the looks of it, has unrolled the loop. Uh, we've got maybe two accumulators here. We've got XMM2 just there, XMM1 just there. This is fascinating stuff so it seems as though the microsoft compiler is reading two floats or adding two floats to xmm2 adding two floats to xmm1 and then summing them together to a single value within the body of the loop it's a strange thing to do because you could just keep the same accumulators like the other compilers were doing yeah never mind but still uh it's going to be fairly quick uh, as opposed to just using uh, add ss or the, the scalar version interesting that it hasn't actually uh, it hasn't actually used avx2 i wonder i wonder why not okay so for the final test we'll start with clang and the final test is find smallest so if i just paste uh it's just an integer array and all we're looking for is the smallest element of the array so what i'm kind of testing here is to see if ultimately if any of the compilers can figure out to unroll and avx this if they can it's going to be very very fast uh, otherwise i think the next best option would be to use something like the cmov instructions yeah we'll see how they go or uh, alternatively if they don't really notice anything if they have absolutely no idea what this code is on about um, then they'll just use a whole bunch of if statements or a whole bunch of conditional um, jumps in the middle of the loop Let's see how we go. So this is Clang up first. Let's see how Clang goes. Wow. Wow. It's AVXed it. It's AVXed it. I, I'm, I'm dumbfounded. It's AVXed it and unrolled it 15 million times. <laughs> That's going to fly. That's going to absolutely fly. Unbelievable. Yeah, well, there you go. So this is going to take out like 8 times 4 times 2. Well, 8 times 2 is 16. 16 times 4 is 64 at once, I guess. Oh, it's here again. I should just look down here. The count is right down here. 64 of these integers at once uh, or per iteration of the loop. Unbelievable. I love the way that Clang unrolls things. It's just, it's a magnificent code to look at. Look at this. Look at this. Okay, well done, Clang. Next compiler. Oh, I didn't expect to see that. I didn't expect to see it. I did kind of assume that the count is uh, one or more, which is probably not quite correct. But anyway, let's just just ignore my poor programming skills and uh, we'll move on. Let's see. So this is uh, GCC 9.2. Let's see what he's got. Um, okay, mov e uh, a x d word point e r. Okay, so that's just that, that first line there. Um, just move the first element into there. Then test if ESI is zero. So that's going to be the count. All right, so if the count is nothing, then just get out of here. Otherwise, compare edx to 6. Why? <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine. Is edx 6? That's what it says at that point in the program. V mov d xmm1 eax. Wow. It's shifting things from the x86 registers into the uh, SSE registers. Mov rdi rax. So what's rdi, the count? Weird. Broadcast why <laughs> wow okay so where's the body of the loop oh it's right there 
Let's see if it's... Oh, it's in another couple of places too. A lot of places. Mov SX. Move and sign extend. What? <laughs> C Mov G. Okay. C Mov G. It looks like it's used the uh, C Movs. But... Uh, VP Min. Okay, so... so so GCC, by the looks of it, has not uh, aggressively unrolled the loop. Uh, like Clang is just a complete monster. <laughs> GCC has used VP uh, VP min SD. So that's the um, uh, integers, uh, find the minimum of integers. And it's an AVX instruction, but it doesn't look like it's unrolled it any further than that. It has got this strange code down here. I don't know what this is. CMOV G. Why, why is there conditional move on greater than? We're not looking for the greatest. We're looking for the smallest. Why CMOV G? Move and sign extend. Compare EAX CMOV G. I wonder what that's doing. Maybe the operands are swapped and it's really checking if it's uh, less than. I, that's my that's my guess. Anyway, I don't know why they've I don't know why they've done it like that, but but it looks like all of that stuff at the end there must be some kind of a scalar loop, uh, or at least a loop that's not. Um, it's not vectorized like this one, VP min SD. GCC has not unrolled it any further than vectorizing it. Yeah, which I will say is quite good. Okay, the next compiler is the Intel compiler. Let's see how it deals with the find the smallest. Okay, we've got... Uh, okay, so move the value, check if it's zero. Where's the body of the loop? CMOV L. There you go, CMOVs. Okay. Okay, so it looks like the uh, Intel compiler has also used um, AVX, but hasn't further unrolled it. Yeah, so it's using vectorized AVX with the VP min SD instruction, but it hasn't otherwise unrolled it any further. Interesting up the top here, it's got a little bit of a CMOV. We just got a little bit of a conditional move up here, and then quickly into vectorizing things. Yeah, my code is, is slightly awkward because I've, I've assumed that there's one element in the array, which is probably not right, really. I wonder if I go up the top here and I say uh, if count equals zero, return zero. Yeah, well, it seems to have changed the code a little bit anyway, but if we just come down to the body of the loop and have a bit of a squiz at how it's done that, and no, it's still got this strange thing here, um, seam of L, conditional move less. Um, okay, so the body of the loop is here, VP min SD. Okay, so uh, once again, um, the Intel compiler has figured out to AVX this uh, with the VP min SD instruction, but it hasn't otherwise unrolled it. Uh, all of this stuff here will just be the, the dealing with the residuals afterwards. I'm looking at these shuff Ds just here. What's this is going to be the, um, the final comparisons of, of, of the elements within the vector? Yeah, okay, but the main body of the loop is just there. VP min SD, basically, then move up to the next ones. Let's have a look at the final compiler. This is the Microsoft compiler. Okay, let's see how we did. So we got MOV, uh, EDX, R8, D. What's, uh... Oh, that's the count. All right, make a bit of a copy of the count into R8, D. Then do some stuff with R10. Why not? Test if EDX is zero. Okay, check if our count is zero because I put that line in just there. I should have put that in from the start, really. Um, and jump if there's nothing in the array to quit. Uh, otherwise, we want to zero something, which is our smallest so far, presumably, or something like that. Uh, EAX. All right, but where's the body of our loop? Let's see. It looks as though the Microsoft compiler has used um, P min SD or the SSE instructions instead of the AVX instructions, which is quite interesting. I wonder how quick this would go in comparison to something like Clang that unrolled very aggressively and used AVX. Okay, so it says this is the main body of the loop. Move a bunch of values into XMM0, then we add our 9, uh, 8, which is some kind of a counter, I guess. Uh, find the minimum and store them in XMM1. Move a bunch more, add another 8 to some other counter. This looks like it's got two little offset pointers or something. RCX and R9D. What's what's R9D got to do with anything? <laughs> Who knows? I'd count that as unrolling it uh, once and using uh, SSE vector registers. 
Yeah, so it's not aggressive unrolling and it hasn't used AVX, but I think it's done a pretty decent job to figure out that you can actually do PMIN SD. Uh, strange that it hasn't done VP min SD like the other compilers, but who am I to judge? <laughs> Anyway, that's just a little bit about uh, Godbolt Compiler Explorer. Really, really fascinating stuff to see uh, how modern optimizing compilers work. Uh, so you do have to be careful how you type this code out. So at the very start, we used um, Kernigan's population count. If you use uh, a, a fairly naive population count where you just um, step through each bit, um, you know, have a, have a loop of 31, uh, iterations and you just step through and and the ones and count them all up like that uh, I found that none of the compilers realize that that's a population count so you do have to be careful what kind of code um, you supply these compilers some of the code they'll realize matches their um, mechanisms for optimizing and some of the code just rather strangely doesn't uh, okay, so I'll leave a link to the Godbolt Compiler Explorer down below so that you can paste in your own code and explore how the optimizing compilers optimize it. And I also will put um, down below the uh, settings in the video description that I used for my uh, compiler options. Uh, I will say that my settings that I used here are probably not optimal for certain things, but they are, I think, pretty good settings for fairly aggressive uh, vectorization, automatic vectorization and that sort of thing. And other than that, I just want to say thank you very much for watching and you have a really good day. Adios. <laughs> yeah, I think if you unroll something like four times, uh, you, you tend not to get that much speed by unrolling it 111 more times. <laughs> but good on you, Clang, for trying. I love the look at this. I just love this. Look at this. Yeah, full like SIB instruction addressing. It's just gone completely crazy. Absolutely astonishing. Astonishing.